Hi there, Mr. Arnold here for Hegarty Maths, um, and this is the second video uh, for our core maths course, and it's applicable to most maths modules. And basically, we're going to do some uh, some factorising, an absolutely essential skill if you want to be a good mathematician. So we've got lots of different examples to do, um, and this is just a reintroduction to basic factorising. Okay, so we got something like this, 3x plus 9, and I'm at, I want to factorise that. I've got to take out what's common to both. I can factor out a 3, and that leaves me with x plus 3. Okay, moving on. Second example, we got 5x squared plus 2x. What's common to both? Uh, I can factor out an x, and that will leave me with 5x plus 2. Okay, third example. Again, we should, this should be um, fairly straightforward. What's common to both um, terms here? Well, I can factor out 3y. And that leaves me with 3y squared, because 3y times 3y squared is 9y cubed, plus, and 3y times 1 will give me 3y. Okay, fourth example here. y squared minus 4. So you might look at this and think, oh, there's nothing common. This is a special case of something that we call the difference of two squares. So um, when we have two terms that are squared, so say something like this, one term squared minus the second term squared, in other words, the difference, okay, difference of two different squares, it's going to equal this. So essentially, I need two brackets. What is the square root of y uh, of y squared? It's y, so y here and here. Uh, I need a plus and a minus, or a minus and a plus, like I had here. It doesn't really matter. And square square root of four is two. So, and if you want, you can check this by expanding out. Uh, and I guarantee, if you expand out these brackets, you'll end up with y squared minus four. Okay, what about example five? Um, what can I factor out of both? Well, let's look at the numbers first of all. What can I factor out? 2. I can factor out a 2 for sure. 2 is the highest common factor of 4 and 2. What about a squared b and ab squared? The highest common factor of those guys is going to be ab. So, I'm factoring out 2ab. So, what will I have to multiply 2ab by to make 4a squared b? It will have to be 2a just 2a because 2a times 2ab gives me 4a squared b and then a minus sign here and what will I multiply this guy by to make this guy well I just gotta multiply it by b and that's the job done okay what about number six okay this is looking a little bit familiar just like the guy up here difference of two squares again um, so I can see that this is a square number and this is a square number and there's a difference so it's the difference of two squares so what I do is open up the brackets and what I can do is take the square root of 16t squared which gives me 4t that goes at the front of both a plus and a minus or a minus and a plus and then the square root of 100 10 and again, you can check it by expanding out if you're not sure. Okay. These guys, they come up everywhere. They're called quadratics. So we need to be able to factorize these. So, uh, factors of x squared are x and x. And now I need to think of two numbers that multiply to make minus 10, but add to make minus 3. So I'm going to think a little bit of, little bit of thought. 5 and 2 spring to mind. I can use a 5 and a 2 to make the 10, multiply to make 10. And if I wanted to make minus 3, well, if I had minus 5 and I add 2, that will give me the minus 3 that I'm looking for. And hence, it's been factorized. Okay, uh, this guy here, example 8, a little bit more tricky now to think of these. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a wee bit more space. So let's just move this down a bit we don't want that to happen 
Put that down and move that there. Okay. Now, if you've watched our tutorial on factorizing quadratics where the coefficient of a number in front of x squared is not 1, we have a little trick. So if I do 3 times minus 8, I'll get minus 24. Okay. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to open up brackets and say, right, stick whatever number is here, I'm going to stick in, in front. So I'm going to have 3x and 3x. And now what I have to do is think of two numbers that multiply to make minus 24. This is how I get my target, by doing 3 times minus 8. Multiply to make minus 24, but add to make minus 2. So let me think. Uh, 6 and 4 spring to mind. A 6 and a 4 spring to mind. Uh, if I do 6, 6 times 4 is 24. And if I wanted minus 2, if I had minus 6 and plus 4, that would give me the minus 2. So, that's what I'm going to put in the brackets, minus 6 and 4. So, minus 6 and plus 4. And then what I do is I look at both expressions here. Um, is the, I've multiplied this guy by 3. So, I need to be able to divide one of these by 3. And you can see that this one here is divisible by 3. So, I'm going to divide both terms by 3. And I get x minus 2 times 3 x plus 4. Okay, let's have a look at the second, the next one. Again, we do have a tutorial that explains this in, in much more detail. Um, now we're going to use that method again. So, take the number in front of x squared and times it by minus 3. So I get minus 36. I need th two numbers that multiply to make minus 36 and that add to make minus 5. Okay, so they've got to add to make minus 5 and multiply to make minus 36. So let me think. Uh, numbers that are 9 and 4. 9 and 4. 9 times 4 is 36. Yeah? And then if I wanted to make minus 5 by adding these numbers, if I had a minus 9 and a plus 4, that will give me minus 5. So I'm going to use that to help me. And again, remember, stick 12 in front of both of them first. 12x, um, 12x uh, minus 9, isn't it? 12x minus 9, and 12x plus the 4. Okay. Now this is an intermediate step. This is not actually, this is not equal to this. Okay? It's just a little trick to help us. So, now, I've multiplied this by 12, so I need to be able to divide this expression by 12 in total. Um, now, this one here, the first one, I can see I can divide that by 3. I can divide that by 3 to get 4x minus 3. So I've divided that one by 3, and this one I can divide by 4. And dividing by 3 and dividing by 4 is the same as dividing by 12. So dividing this by 4, we get 3x plus 1. And if you want, you could check this by multiplying out, and you'll see that we'll get back to here. So that's a factorized. All right, example 10. Again, we're going to need a bit more space. So let's move this one down. And now, this example here, um, it looks like it's a quadratic, but it's it's not quite. But what I can do is I can help I can help factorize this by saying, uh, I say, well, what if I say let x equal y squared? So if x equals y squared, if x equals y squared. Well, what do I have here? This then would become x squared plus 2x minus 15. And now I can factorize this. So x, x, and x, 
and then factors of minus, so two numbers that multiply to make minus 15, but add to make 2. Okay, a little bit of thought. I'm thinking of a 5 and a 3. Um, we, want, we want a positive 2, so plus 5 and minus 3. Plus 5 and minus 3. And we've almost factorized it. Remember, x equals y squared. So that is going to break down to be y squared plus 5 times y squared minus 3. Okay, last example for this video, okay? So watch out for this as well. We got, um, it's a quadratic, and don't jump the gun straight away and go, okay, yeah, I remember what Mr. Arnold did in the video, 3 times 24, etc., etc., and, and go from there. If I look carefully, I, I can see straight away that I can actually divide everything by 3. In other words, I can factor out a 3. So it's actually 3 times x squared plus 6x plus 8. So that's what I have here. And then I can factorize this as normal. So x and x, two numbers that multiply to make 8, but add to make 6. 4 and 2 will do the job here. And hence, we factorize this expression fully. That's all for me. Hopefully, you found it useful. I'll be back again. Hopefully, with some uh, with some more um, new material for you. All the best.